everyone, welcome back to Rich and Bella Crafts. Rich are here. I hope you're all well and I hope you're all really, really enjoying the first week of our collaboration. So why am I showing you all this mess on my desk? Well, because I've been really busy this week working on my design team project for Pink Monarch Prints with this amazingly beautiful kit that she has out. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, but it's very easy sometimes to just show you this lovely clean area here and I just wanted you all to see this is the mess that makes the magic. So what have we got in store today? Well hang on with me and you will find out. Hello everybody so I hope you are all having a great week. Today is January, Saturday January the 5th. No it is not. <gasps> Take two. Okay, so I fluffed it up. It is not January, Saturday, January the 5th. It is Saturday, February the 5th. I've just got it and turned my calendar over because I keep giving you the wrong date. Okay, I'm super, super excited. We have had an amazing first start to the week. No, amazing start to the first week. As you can tell, it's Saturday. My brain is really tired and I'm just super excited because I've just had an amazing week. So work's going well. The job's been amazing. We've had lots of amazing things happen and the collaboration has gone off to a bang. It's been brilliant. So I'm going to give you a really fast rundown of what we have had and who we've seen so far. Okay, so the beginning of the week you had me with 10 different ways to use your book pages. I'm going to come back to some of the questions that you left in the comments a little bit later, so hang about for that. Then we went on to see the wonderful Angela Kerr and she did some beautiful tags using up her scraps. If you haven't yet watched that video, go check out the video. Oh, it's amazing. And everything that she does is beautiful. But I was absolutely agog watching what she did with the scraps that she had on her table. So beautiful work. Um, then we saw um, Ellie from Periwinkle Matilda Journals. And Ellie showed us how to create cardstock using book pages. Again, if you haven't watched the video, go check it out. Some seriously talented ideas in our collaboration this month. Then we had, on Thursday, we had Anna from Pink Monarch Prints. Anna very kindly gave you all, and this is just a small, small selection of, she gave you a full kit basically for um, as a freebie. So if you haven't seen that, go and find Pink Monarch Prints. Go and watch her video and she will tell you how to find the freebie. Um, you need to go to her Facebook page. It's not a group, it's a page. And she will tell you in the video how you do that. Um, and download it because I went straight on. Look, I downloaded it. I've torn mine. I've aged them. I've used my little... First of all, I've actually managed to use my little thingy to edge the e edges of the pages. Look, but I mean, how cool are these? And she did little labels for you. She did some tear pages. But she used all of that ephemera to make some beautiful stuffed envelopes um which were like uh, like envelopes but also you could use them as pockets but brilliant ideas and again it's always lovely to sit and have some time there with Anna and then last night for me it was this morning because I was up a bit well you know we went to bed and then you guys had it on come on in the middle of the night from the wonderful um Edith from Scrapbooking With Me and she has actually put together a junk journal a real junk journal using junk and it's amazing. It is really, really inspirational. And what she created was absolutely beautiful. So ladies, thank you so much for your um, just wonderful, enthusiastic ideas for the first week of our collaboration. So today you have me again today, guys. <laughs> so sorry if you were looking for a new voice, but I'm back. And I am like the Duracell bunny this morning. I don't know why, but it's been a really exciting week. And yeah, it's just great to be able to be back at my crafting table. So uh, why did I show you all that mess at the beginning? Well, because we're talking about tips and tricks and hacks. Last month we were talking about um, being organised with um, Cara. Again, if you uh, didn't see that, go back to my first video. I did do the link in the comments. I'm sorry, I missed putting it in the description box. But if you haven't seen the last month's collaboration with Cara Brandon, go check that out. Because if you need to get your space organised, no better place to start than with those tips there. They were, they were brilliant. Um, but... I'm not organised here today. I'm not organised here. Well, I am. I'm in an organised mess, but that's because I'm busy and I'm constructing. So the first thing I want to do is just to clear up any confusion because I know a couple of you have been like, ah, we can't find the videos. So just to go back over it, go to our YouTube channel. 
I will put the link below. The link below will take you directly to our playlist and I will put there all of these wonderful videos every day. As they're put on, I will add them to the playlist. So if you save that link and just keep going back to the playlist, you'll see them on there and they will be on there in order. So you shouldn't have to go scrabbling around looking for any videos. So if it's not on the playlist, that means it hasn't yet been put up, okay? So a little bit of patience might be needed some days because, you know, we have technical difficulties and, you know, everybody's got jobs and stuff. So as the best tool in the world, we try to get them up nice and early, but it doesn't always happen. So if you just bear with us, that would be amazing. Okay, what was I going to tell you next? Uh, now, before I go on, one other thing that I need to mention as well, if you didn't see uh, my other video earlier in the week, you won't have realised that we have actually got a sale on our Etsy shop. Um, it is my birthday later this month, and um, to celebrate that, I want to give you all 40% off our Digi um, kits. All of our kits are on sale. The link is below. You don't need a code. Literally just go to our Etsy shop and everything will automatically have 40% off. So if you wanted to snap up some of our kits, now is the time to do it. So go and check those out, okay? Prizes! Of course, yes, the prizes. Right. <laughs> so I've asked all of these lovely ladies here to come back to me if they want to contribute to the giveaway for you guys for this collaboration. So, so far, I have spoken to... These ladies, look how many prizes there are already. This, this is going to be amazing, this giveaway. Absolutely amazing. So this is the list of the prizes that I've had in so far. Um, you will have these prizes directly from these YouTube channels, okay? This Facebook, oh, no, it's not Facebook. This giveaway will be drawn at the end of the collaboration. And in order to enter the giveaway, you have to watch each of these videos that are listed here. And only these videos, nothing else. So, you know, there may be other th other people tend to, if they're following along with something, tend to use the hashtag, which is why I'm saying just go to the playlist because it will only be these videos here. These are the ones that you need to watch. You need to like the video. You need to subscribe to the channel and you need to leave a comment in the video, okay? Do that with them all and that will enter you then into the giveaway draw. Now, obviously, there's going to be more than one winner. There's going to be lots of winners because we've got lots of prizes. So I'm just going to quickly go through what we've got so far. And I know the list will continue to grow. We have got three prizes from um, Rachel Velocrass, that's us. For our shop, you will have a gift code to spend in the shop to the value of £20. Uh, Heart Finds, which is Rose, or one of my roses. <laughs> I've got two roses. It's amazing. She's going to do an ephemera and embellishment pack. She's got lots of beautiful things there ready to put together and she will post that out directly from where she is. Um, Shinuki Art has got some lovely handmade index cards and she is going to give away a set of three of those. Fraps and Scraps, she's going to do a napkin bundle, but she's also going to do one month subscription to her Facebook group, which is called Frap House Fun. Angela Kerr is going to give away some digital kits from her Etsy shop. Pink Monat Prince is going to give away two $20 gift codes for her Etsy shop for you to buy uh, digital kits there. Journals in Time, which is my other rose, she is going to give away um, a copy of her spring digital kit, which I am going to show you in a moment. And Sparkle Creations is going to give away a fabric album cover, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure she will tell you more about that in her video. And Edith from Scrapbooking With Me is giving away a $25 gift card for you to spend in her store. So they are the prizes so far. So if you're all kind of like, well, what is the prizes? What's going on? What are we, you know, doing all this for? That's what's on the table so far. So don't miss out. Make sure you get on and you leave your comments and your likes and subscribe. Don't leave it all to the end and then you'll have to go back and, you know, do it all. So I'm just kind of prompting you now. Today we are on number six. Also, just to clear up in case there's any confusion, I'm just going to show you our schedule because obviously I've put that out just so you know what videos to look for. But there aren't seven videos in a week in case you notice. I've given you a day off. Um, this is the schedule. This is what we've all had, all the guys that are taking part. So it started on the 31st, which might is what might throw people out. So we're not going on date order, okay? Um, and then obviously you love the next, the, there was a video on the 31st, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and the 5th, which is today. And then there's no videos for Sundays. So apart from the very last one. So they're all running Monday to Saturday, except for the last week where the last video will be on the Sunday, all right? But they're not running every day. So don't please don't look at that there and think, number one, that means the first, number two, that means the second. Basically, just keep checking the playlist. <laughs> 
That's the easiest way for you to do it. And then you're not going to miss anything because there's so much going on. Right, let me move this off my desk. Don't forget to go get Anna's um, freebie. That's amazing. Like I say, I've, I've used most of it. That's all I've got left. <laughs> I'll show you the rest of that later. Oh, I'm so excited today. I'm sorry I will draw breath now. Right, I have had sent to me by the beautiful Rose, who is now part of my design team, which I'm so excited about. Um, she has sent to me a copy of her new kit. Now this kit is, I want to say an assault to the senses, but that sounds a bit rude. So it's not an assault, it, but it is just like, oh my gosh, I printed it off this morning. My eyes just couldn't take it all in. It is stunning. Her kit is called Spring Fresh. And um, let me just show you. There we are. So there's the Journals in Time is her Etsy store and it is Spring Fresh journal kit and then an ephemera pack. Now, why have I printed them on different colours papers, you may say? Well, I have a reason for that because obviously I want to use them. But I've printed them out half size. So I'm going to just zoom in and show you them page by page because they really are beautiful. So let me just kind of hold tight. Okay. So I didn't shake you about too much. So I'm going to show you the pages and I'm just going to move them up and down so that you can see. So this is the first one. Uh, there are little fairies in this kit. There is beautiful script in this kit. Um, oh, the flowers, everything about it is absolutely exquisite. Um, she messaged me in the week because um, we're chatting. We've actually got something going on next month. Um, so look out for that. But she messaged me in the week and she was like, do you and Bella want to have a little look at the kit? I was like, oh yes, please send it over. So I thought I've got to share this with you because I've just printed it off and I was just jumping around so excited. But just look at the detail in this kit. It is stunning and the colours are so vibrant. So I actually had a play around when I was printing this out because um, when it was first coming off on my printer, it was really, really bright. So I tried printing it in draft and it came out just as bright and vibrant um but the green was just a slightly different tone so there we go so if you're playing around and you want to um work out how to perhaps have a play about with tones and things when you're printing kits try your print setting sometimes if you go up or down a setting um it will you know alter the, the effect that you get now i've tried printing it on some white this is 120 gsm which is, is quite thick paper for us this is more than copy paper for here in the uk um, here we call copy paper probably about 80 GSM. So um, this is quite good quality paper and the, the, the vibrancy of this kit is just absolutely beautiful. There's just so much detail in the pages. I love this one. This is my favourite page, I think. And I, I would say what I think the flowers are, but I know I'm going to end up getting myself in a knot <laughs> this Saturday morning. I'm always in a knot on a Saturday, but look at these. I've, t I've done these on cream because I specifically want these postcards to look quite oldy, but they are beautiful. You almost feel like these are popping off the page, aren't you? And then you've got these stunning, stunning little, um, that's a coin envelope there, I think. You've got washi tapes, beautiful colours and tones. Now, I've printed these half size because I'm going to make a mini journal with them. Well, not, an, I shouldn't call it a mini journal, should I? I'm going to make an A5 journal with it. Um, and I'm going to keep this on my desk in my new office because um, our office has had a bit of a, a makeover this last two weeks and we've got our lights up and one thing or another and I just like to have pretty things on my desk when I work. I find it quite inspiring. So I thought what better to have on my desk with spring coming than a copy of a journal made with Rose's Spring Fresh kit. Look at that, I love that shape pocket there. That is just stunning. It's just so much, there's just so many details. I, now I believe this is two different kits. One is ephemera and one is journal pages. So make sure when you go and check out her Etsy channel page, even shop, that's the one I'm looking for. When you check out the shop, make sure you, you know, check, make sure that you've got what you need there. Um, but you can win a copy of this kit. So make sure you enter the giveaway. And if you can't wait until then, go over and check out her Etsy shop. Um, what else have I got to show you? So much on my desk. Have I covered everything? Giveaway, reminder of who's on, thanked everybody. Thanked you. Have I said hello and thank you? If I haven't, if you're new to the channel, hi. I'm not always this crazy. It's just Saturday morning. <laughs> um, welcome to our channel and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following the collaboration. So if you watched my video on Monday, the 31st of January, <laughs> 
it was January, the beginning of the week, you see. Um, if you watched my video, you will see that the first thing that I said that you could do with the book pages was to print on to a book page. Now, this was, oh, let's see, misprint, but never mind that. Ignore that, my ink was running out. This is, as you can see, a piece of vintage uh, music paper. Now, I asked for you to leave questions in the comments of that video if there was anything you wanted to see or anything you wanted me to further tell you about. And, and the most asked question was, how do I print onto the book page? Do I do anything special? So I'm going to tell you what I do that's really special to make it come out so amazing. <laughs> You're going to laugh when I tell you this. All I did to prep my book page, now I was working with big book pages for the most part. Where's the other one? I gave most of them to mum the other day because I went out and she was like, ooh, they're pretty. So I just emptied my bag onto her table. So this is the one that I did. You can see that was a really old book page there. Now that was a, a large book that I've managed to get out from. Um, this is out of our limited edition kit, which we will be releasing soon. Um, and this is, as I say, a big music page, but if you don't have large pages, it doesn't matter. Did I do anything special to get this effect? No, I did not. I simply cut my large pages down because they were bigger than the print space. My printer only prints up to A4. So I just basically put the pages in my paper cutter, put an A4 sheet of paper over the top of it. And I, as you can see, I just simply sliced to the edge and it is actually short, but it didn't matter. Um, with the music page, again, the same. I just placed that over the top, as you can see and that is just the size of A4. So all I've done is cut these pages down to A4 because they were slightly bigger and the edges were raggedy. Now my tips for you would be, if you're using smaller book pages, that's fine. When you put them into your printer, you've got the kind of like the, the sidey bits, I don't know what they're called, the bits that slide in and out. Just bring it in so it's just touching the edges of your page. Another tip that I would give you is, if you've got a very raggedy edge page, just pop it through your paper trimmer and just make the edges neat. You can always make them raggedy again after. I mean, it's not hard to age, you know, we've got these things. Craig, you could do it with your, your finger luck with uh, the, your very old book pages. It doesn't take much to age the edge, but I'm just thinking from the point of view of it going through the printer, I would just make sure that, you, that the, the bit that's being grabbed is, is, nice and, is nice and cut smoothly. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, as to it going through the printer, no issues at all. It will drag it through like it will anything else. Fabric, normal paper, <coughs> excuse me, uh, vellum, it all goes through. A book page will be exactly the same. Now, if you are working with a particularly old um, book page and you really want to print onto it, um, I am not giving you any guarantees that that's going to work because I don't want anybody having 120 year old paper disintegrating in the printer and blaming me. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to say what my suggestion would be, would be to take um, an old washi tape that you don't particularly use, obviously not with this one, um, and I would stick it down securely. So I would put washi tape all around the edge onto an A4, you know, a normal A4 sheet of uh, printing paper. And I would just secure all of that in place and then, you know, reduce your print size and on your, your print settings. But I wouldn't personally put through the printer very old thin um book pages or music paper okay um i felt quite confident to put these sheets through because they are fairly sturdy albeit very old it, it is a good thick page um i tell you what i haven't actually printed on is edith holden perhaps i should try that next and we'll see how that goes ah do you know what i'm gonna do it now okay so i'm just over at my computer and i'm just going to pop um this is one of our rosy bloom i'm just going to click on to print here and where I've then got the print settings, I'm just going to take it out of print to frame and I'm going to pop this in, but I'm going to go with letter size because letter size is probably nearer the size of, um, oh, what's it called? Edith Holden book pages. Um, and obviously I don't want to overprint, but this page here, if I just zoom you in a minute, guys, I'm sorry if it's distorting on the image, but this page here is a good example of the type of page to use because it hasn't got any specific um, like images. So obviously this runs up and down the page here. It doesn't matter if this gets cut off. 
that's what I'm basically trying to say. It will only print to the area that you put into the printer, but it doesn't matter if any of that gets cut off. I've not got words on there or anything like that. So I'm just going to put the piece of paper into the printer drawer. Okay, so we're down at my printer drawer, and this is what I was referring to as the slidey things. So you pop your paper in, you reduce the size according to the size of the paper that you're popping into um, the printer drawer, and then you simply shut your drawer. The best. Back then to the computer, um, and I'm going to press print, and we'll see what happens. There we go. No tricks. <laughs> Here we go. So, sorry about that little interlude then, but I just feel sometimes it's hard trying to explain things without actually showing you. So, you all saw that go in, you all saw that come out. That was the Edith Holden page, and this is it come out printed on. I think that looks quite cool. I don't know why I haven't thought of doing that before. This isn't out of the actual Edith Holden um, but this is out of the notes, nature notes, is it called? Yeah, nature notes. Um, so, you know, but again, it's that lovely aged kind of paper but you can put anything you like on there now. But you see what I was saying about how it doesn't, if you use something that hasn't got like a fixed print to it um, or images on it, it doesn't matter then if it, it it's shorter or the ink will only print on the area that you're giving it. So whether you're putting in an A4 size or whether you're putting in, I don't even know what that is. It's not A5, is it? It's bigger than A5. So, but I, as you saw, I literally popped into the printer and just shut the things up. So I'm hopeful that's answered that question for you um, as to how I printed on two book pages. But yeah, I've just surprised myself there because I didn't even think, well, I wouldn't have thought of printing on Edith Holden because we we do think of Edith's books as kind of the holy grail. But that is kind of nice. I like that. That's, that's really lovely. Okay, so going through some of the comments, I confess I haven't read them all yet. It's been a really busy week. Um, but for those that I have read, um, there was a question or a request from Deb and Nicole to show you how I made these little pockets. So I think somebody described them as boat pockets. It took me a little while to work out which ones you were on about, but they do actually look like little boats. So I do hope these are the ones you were talking about. So I'm going to show you now how to create these. They are dead easy and we'll have a little, um, you know, we'll, we'll decorate a few then, shall we? So the first thing that you're going to need to do is grab yourself some pages. Now you can use book pages, you can use kit pages. We'll have a little look and of course we'll give this one a try that we've just now um, Gone and made it look even more beautiful. So the first thing that you need to do is to create a square because it all hinges on a square. So if you are using book pages, then obviously you'll need to do what I'm doing here. If you have those little six by six um, paper pads that we all bought loads of when we start junk journaling and then suddenly realise we don't actually know what we want to do with them or don't really need them maybe, or I don't know. I, I find them sometimes great to use and other times I'm like, oh, I don't want to do with these. But if you have those, these are perfect for those because you don't need to cut them. But I'm not using those. I'm going to use my pages that I have here because we're kind of working with book pages, aren't we? So let's kind of stick with the theme. So I'm going to make a square. And then once I've made my squares, this funny feeling card. Right, well, let's use this one as well then. So this is a page here from our shoes on the past kit I think um yeah okay I could do with ah that's what I could do with I don't know why I printed this on funny card I think but we'll use that up as well so that's three squares shall we do one more yes let's use this lovely back page here that I've um yeah that could work could work because we don't like waste away and um, if you've got where well, you print I don't know about your printer but my printer just always seems to leave this border around don't worry it's fine it really doesn't matter and in fact it probably looks quite cool with this so now you've got your squares you can either now get your um your uh score thing don't make you all too dizzy but I really could do is probably get in a smaller paper cutter but I just love this one it's just amazing and good it's just big all right so pop your paper cutter on Pop it on your paper cutter or use your scoreboard and then just slice that bit off. Keep that because we'll use that afterwards. Don't want to waste anything, do we? 
quickly me giving you tips and tricks. I've only given you more scraps. That's no good. So, one, two. And then another one. That's why I say fold a few and then it's just quicker then when you've got your cutter out. Just to slice them down. And obviously the trick is to get that straight bit there, that long triangle. I want to call it the hypotenuse, but I might be wrong. Okay, now, pay close attention because this is where it gets quite complicated, okay? So you've got your square. That's our square. You've already got your triangle because that's how we got our square. If you're using square pages, now this is the point you need to make this triangle. So fold one corner up to the other and then give this a good, you know, one of them. Then bring down this corner here. So I find it just nice and easy to make sure everything stays straight. It's just to position yourself. If you've got a grid mat, a uh, mat like mine, bring it down then to the, ooh, everything's moving. Bring it down to the center here. Now, obviously this would have been easier if I wasn't using this ridiculous piece of card. I don't know why. I, I don't know how I managed to print this on here, but okay. So are you with me so far? That's got to fold down there, okay? Then you're going to take this corner here and you're going to take it up and you're going to tuck it under there, just so. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. There we go. And then you're going to take this side here and you're going to do the same thing again and you're going to tuck it up, but don't go above the fold here looks. This is why you need to make sure your fold is folded well. So this now needs to come across. This is sometimes where a bit of a nail pinch just helps. And then, now obviously the thinner your paper, the easier this fold is going to be. I don't know why I started doing this with a piece of card, but there we go. I was just trying to find double-sided printed bits. So there you've got that then going under there, okay? So you've got fold, fold, and then and fold that back down over the top. Now, just to kind of really set it off. Oh, and I found this. It was in the back of my drawer. Oh, I was so pleased. Take your corner cutter and just soften those edges up there. Now, I personally like to go around now at this point and just ink here and ink here. And then you may want to also go down and ink here, here, and here. And then you might want to reopen this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm a bit froggy. And you might want to just ink across here. Because it just makes everything pop, doesn't it? As we know. So put your fold back under. And there we go. Now, you can decorate this in any way you want. I'll show you that in a moment. And obviously we're going to secure it down with a little glob of glue at the bottom there in a moment. But I did think we might actually do a little variation on this today because there was a little tip that I picked up watching, ah, oh, Nicky Nocky New, and I haven't written down whose video it was. So oh, <laughs> there was just so much to tell you all today. Um, no, there was an amazing tutorial this week. Uh, oh, I know what it was. I remember. I remember. Okay. So I'm going to show you this again while I tell you about the tutorial. It wasn't a tutorial, it was a flip through. The girls in our Facebook group have done an amazing, amazing swap ta um, event this month called With a Little Help From My Friends. Now, if you have been watching any of the girls who are in this collaboration, um, who are in my design team and who are admin in my Facebook group, you will have seen that some of them have taken part in the event and have been posting their flip throughs this week. Now. Rose, Journals and Time, is one of them. Now, I was watching um, some of the videos this week. There were different teams made up, and the idea was is that they all had to make, over the space of a fortnight, a different piece of ephemera, which they then posted out to each one in their team. So everybody basically, say I was making these, I would make five, and I would send one to each of the, the four of the people in my team. And at the end of it, then, they all had to put a journal together. And the journal then, they have to do a flip through and we, we're kind of like, you know, going to do some prizes then this week. We're just waiting for a few more of the videos to go up. Um, but I think it was Debbie had sent out one of her um, ephemera makes and she had used a button as a closure and it was super cool. 
So I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go and check out all of the flip throughs that they've done. But I, I know I remember somebody saying, I don't remember which video it was in. I, I do apologise. I know I'm useless. But um, one of them did say, oh my gosh, Debbie, that was such a brilliant idea. And I know that it was Deb's um, ephemera that she sent to them. So she used a little button as a, a closure for to keep, you know, the flap down. And then it just tucked in and out. So we're going to try that in a second. But I'm just going to finish showing you how to make these boats. So again, waffle, 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 she says. Back to your triangle, okay? Think about what bit you want on show, though. So obviously you're going to have that bit on show, and then you're going to have that bit on show. So if there's anything particularly interesting on your page, that's quite nice there, but I do like that yellow, so I'm going to go this way. And then we're going to fold it down. They really aren't hard, are they? They really aren't hard at all. And I know you love it when I show you these easy, easy pockets because it's great to have a little stock made. This is why when I do these videos and I, I do a few, I come with different types of papers because they all go then in my um, in my little pot for my pre-made ephemera. And then I've got something no matter what kind of journal I'm working on. That makes sense whereas if i'm just making them all of the same theme you know sometimes you only want one in a journal or two maybe at most don't you like to put different things in so if you're going to sit and do them grab a handful of different types of paper i don't do them all in the same um design that's what i'm trying to say because then uh, you've got a bit of variety okay oh let's just take that off the bottom there oops there we go. And we just ink around there. I don't know really, haven't I? Yeah, and then down the edges here. You don't have to ink, obviously. I just think that by inking certain aspects, it just makes things stand out. And you, you then highlight the areas you want to highlight rather than, because like, I think I quite like that to pop out at the bottom there. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to use up some of your different types of pages that maybe you might not use for other things. Um, that there looks slightly out. It probably is. I've taken the one side across a little bit further than I have the other. So just watch for that on your folding. But that's fine. You'll put something over there and you won't see them, the size of the gap. I'm not going to worry too much. It's, it's the difference between over fussing and just not being careful isn't it so this one here now was my um my misprint so i'm just thinking because of course you don't need to bring this all the way down either so that's something for you to bear in mind um but i think i'm gonna have that side there on show i'm gonna cover that over yeah i'm gonna do that so let's bring this down i'm not gonna take that right the way down this time i'm just gonna do it straight on the other side so i can see what i'm doing and then I'm just going to pinch across there. And then I'm going to bring this across here. There we go. Boat pockets. That's a really good name for them. I didn't think, really think about what they were called. But yeah, I like that. We will call them boat pockets. They do look like little boats, don't they? Do you know what? I've had the craziest week. It's just, I, I, the weeks are just flying by. It's really quite scary. Absolutely flying by. There we go. So that's that one. Now, these are a great thing to do with pages that you've got that, for whatever reason, are just not much cop for anything else. Now, obviously, that was a, a large page that was an a4 page i'd cut down into a square so that's brought out that size that is an edith holden size pocket that is uh i think that was from a slightly less than a5 size at the a4 that one is an edith holden so that's slightly smaller and that was from an a4 sheet as well so i'm going to decorate those in a minute but i don't want to create waste so grab the bits you've cut off and we're just going to really quickly make some little notelets with these. And then we're going to add some bits and pieces to those as well. Because I don't want um, loads of waste on your desks. 
Otherwise, I'm just creating work, aren't we? Yeah, there we go. All right, so we've got our little notelets there, and we've got these here. So, how should we decorate them? Well, what did I do with this? I used a little bit of scrap there. I've put a um, a grommet in the top here so that you can have it hanging off the front of a journal. Um, and I've just taken my punch and I've punched that little image there from another book page. So, let's have a quick look at what we can do with these. So they're all inked ready. I'm just going to quickly ink my little note.
So there we go. Um, that is the end of our tutorial for today. So you've seen now how I have um, created my little boot pockets and I've stuffed them full of all my ephemera. Two I have made with little opening sections here and here by just fixing um, a little button at the bottom, which was Debbie's idea. Um, and then what the ones that do flip open inside then, these are great for, like I say, ephemera storage. If you've got little bits and pieces like stamps and things like that that you want to keep safe, um, there are actually hidden pockets down the ins on the inside of this um, larger pocket. So you can pop things down in there. There's two sections, one there and one there. Um, and like I say, if you send in a bit of happy mail, that's ideal to be able to pop that in there. Uh, and then obviously you can stuff the pocket here. Um, and the same with this one here. Obviously the bigger the piece of paper you use, the bigger the pockets down inside will be. So there's a large pocket area down in there and there's another large pocket area down in there. And then you can just simply pop that underneath your button then to close them up and stuff them as full as you like. And then these two here, obviously I've just added some lovely fabric trims to them and I've put these little notebooks inside that I've made. So that one I've just put a bit of lace on. But these were the scrap ends, if you remember. Well, we can journal and write in those now. Um, and then this one, I added a little fabric pocket to the front to tuck the flat bit into. But again, these are all just really little, simple ideas of things that you can do with your leftovers and your scraps. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you're having a fab time following along with all the collaboration. Use your weekend now to catch up on anything you've missed. Um, and don't forget as well, if you do recreate anything that we've shown you, please um, use the hashtag with your photographs when you post them on Facebook and Instagram and then we can pick them up and you may find yourself featured in one of the real videos that we do. So um, don't forget to tag us so that we see what you're all up to. Hope you have a fabulous weekend. Thank you for joining me and thank you for all your support. We'll see you again very soon. Bye now.